China has been implementing various efforts to reclaim and combat desertification, which is a serious environmental problem in the country. Desertification affects 27% of China's total land area and it poses a significant threat to the country's environment economy and people's livelihood. In recent years, China has completed several major transportation projects across deserts including the Gobi Desert and the Takuma Khan Desert. Moreover, China has also applied tree planting techniques to reverse desertification. According to the National Forestry and Grassland Administration, China planted 7.12 million hectares of trees in 2020, bringing the total of forested area to 70.4 million hectares. These efforts have not only reduced desertification but also helped combat climate change by increasing carbon sequestration and reducing soil erosion. The construction of highways is a complex process that involves many different stages. The recent opening of a new highway in China's Takuma Khan Desert provides a good example of the process involved in building a new roadway. The construction of the Yuli Kimo Highway began in October 2017 and took nearly four years to complete. The first stage of the process involved surveying the area and designing the roadway. Engineers had to take into account the difficult terrain of the desert including tall sand dunes and low-lying areas between them. They also had to ensure that the highway would be able to withstand the harsh weather conditions of the region including frequent sandstorms. Once the design was complete, the construction teams began the process of clearing the land and preparing the foundation for the roadway. This involved leveling of sand dunes and filling in low-lying areas. The highway was built using layers of different materials including gravel, asphalt, and concrete to prevent the highway from being buried by sand. The constructors set up 58 million square meters of grass crates and more than 900 kilometers of barriers. Along the road, these measures helped to stabilize the sand and prevent it from being blown onto the roadway. The construction process also involved the installation of infrastructure such as bridges, culverts, and drainage system. These were necessary to ensure that the roadway would be safe and usable in all weather conditions. Finally, the roadway was paved and marked with lane lines and signage once the highway was complete, it was open to traffic, providing a faster and more efficient way for people and goods to travel across the desert. The New South Yinjiang Railway is a major railway project in China that crosses the country's largest desert. The Takuma Khan Desert in Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, the railway spans 12-13 km and connects Hutan and Kashgar, two major cities in southern Xinjiang. The construction of the new South Xinjiang Railway began in 2009 and was completed in 2016, with a total investment of around 38.2 billion yuan, approximately 5.9 billion US dollars. The project involved the construction of 227 bridges, 23 tunnels, and 8 stations as well as the laying of 2010 kilometers of track. One of the key techniques for building railway in the desert is land preparation. Before laying the tracks, the land must be leveled, compacted, and stabilized to ensure a stable foundation. In the case of new South Xinjiang Railway, engineers used a layer of gravel to improve the stability of the ground. Another important technique is track laying to prevent the tracks from sinking or shifting. Due to the shifting, sand engineers used a ballast bed made of crushed rock and gravel. The ballast bed helps to distribute the weight of the tracks and provides stability to the railway. To cope with the extreme temperatures in the desert, construction team also use specialized equipment and materials. For example, workers use concrete that sets quickly to prevent it from drying out and too quickly in the heat. They also use cooling systems and shade tents to protect workers from heat stroke and dehydration. In addition to these techniques, engineers also implement measures to protect the railway from sand dunes and a wind area. Workers have adopted a green solution to prevent sand from disrupting rail operations. The construction of the Hoti and Ryuzhang Railway, which extends 825 km through the southern edge of the desert, involved the planting of nearly 13 million shrubs and trees with tall trees planted along the outer areas to reduce wind speed and shrubs planted along the inner areas to fix the sand. Automatic irrigation control has also been realized using smartphones, 
The sand prevention green corridor has been built along the Huten Ruchi Railway in China's Xinjiang region. This railway runs through the southern rim of the Takuma Khan and is a key national railway project extending over 825 kilometers. The belt is formed by about 50 million square meters of grass graves and 13 million shrub and tree seedlings stretching 300 kilometers along the railway. The Xinjiang Huten Rumchi Railway Company Limited announced that the Sand Shield Green Belt will help prevent the encroachment of sand onto the railway, ensuring smooth operation and reducing the risk of accidents caused by sandstorm. The railway is expected to start operation next month after the final selection of Takuma Khan Desert. Railway loop line is completed. It is expected to promote the economic and social development of southern Xinjiang. This sand prevention green corridor is a remarkable initiative that highlights China's commitment to combating desertification and protecting the environment. The Taiwan High Speed Rail is a high speed railway network that operates in Taiwan and it is the first high speed railway system in Taiwan and has been in operation since 2007. The project was initiated in the late 1990s to provide a more efficient and comfortable transportation option for travelers in Taiwan. The network covers a total length of 345 kilometers and connects the major cities of Taiwan. The maximum operating speed of the trains is 300 km per hour, which enables passengers to travel between Taipei and Gosian in just 90 minutes. The construction of the system was a massive undertaking that required extensive planning, coordination and investment. The total cost of the project was estimated to be around 460 billion New Taiwan dollars and 15.6 billion United States dollars, which was mainly financed through private investment and loans from international financial institutions. One of the most notable features of the system is its use of advanced technology and safety measures. The trains are equipped with state-of-the-art systems for speed controlling, signalizing and communication, which ensure that the trains operate safely and efficiently. Additionally, the system is designed to withstand earthquakes and typhoons which are common in Taiwan. Since its inception, the system has been a significant contributor to Taiwan's transportation infrastructure and economy. It has become a popular mode of transportation for both business and leisure travelers and has helped to stimulate economic growth in the region. It serves, however, the system has also faced some challenges including financial difficulties and criticism from some members of the public. The high cost of tickets and perceived negative impact on the environment have been the major sources of criticism. Nevertheless, the system has continued to operate and expand with plans for future extensions of other parts of Taiwan. Its renewable energy reached a major milestone with the inauguration of the country's first solar power plant located in the desert area about 80 km west of the capital Doha. The 800 MW Al Karsa solar power plant was built by a joint venture formed by three Chinese enterprises at a cost of $417 million. The plant, which covers an area of 10 square kilometers, and boasts around 2 million solar panels, is one of the largest in the Middle East. Inauguration ceremony was attended by Amir Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, Prime Minister and Minister of Interior Sheikh Khalid bin Khalifa bin Abdulaziz Al Thani and other senior officials. The event marked a significant step forward for the country's energy transition as it seeks to diversify its energy mix and reduce its carbon emissions. As a leading producer of petroleum and natural gas, Qatar has traditionally relied heavily on fossil fuels to power its economy. However, in recent years, the country has recognized the need to invest in renewable energy sources given the global shift towards a low-carbon future. In fact, the Ail Carson project is part of the broader effort by the Qatari government to increase the share of the renewable energy in the country's electricity mix. The government has set a target of producing 20% of its electricity from renewable sources by 2030. The Chinese companies responsible for building the Carson plant have also played a key role in Qatar's renewable energy push. Through technological innovation, they were able to increase the plant's electricity generation capacity by 20% by using automated robotic arms to clean the panels. The Chinese equipment used in the project's 800 megawatts photovoltaic area also made up more than 60% of the total investment. According to Li Jun, on-site construction manager of the Carson solar power plant, the Al Carson plot is expected to meet 10% of Qatar's peak electricity demand and significantly increase the proportion of renewable energy in the country's energy consumption. 
This was particularly important for Qatar as the country prepared to host the FIFA World Cup in 2022, which was pledged to make the first carbon neutral World Cup. The massive supporting event drawed millions of visitors from around the world, and Qatari government was keen to demonstrate the commitment to sustainability and climate action. The success of the Al Carson project is likely to encourage further investment in the renewable energy in Qatar and the wider Middle East region. The United Arab Emirates, for example, has been a leader in the development of solar power in the region with several large scale projects already in operation. Saudi Arabia, another major producer of oil and gas, has also set ambitious targets for the development of renewable energy, including a target of generating 50% of its electricity from renewables by 2030. The process and effects of grass grades and green barriers in the construction of highway rails tracks through the deserts have been successful in China's anti-desertification process. China has made tremendous efforts to control sand by exploring new techniques, improving relevant laws, and launching greening projects. President Xi Jinping has personally been involved in the groundwork and pushing the agenda in person. More than half of China's manageable desertification land has been restored over the past decade reducing the desertified land area by more than 4.33 million hectares since 2012. A series of significant projects have gradually built a green ecological barrier along the sandstone line in the northern China, including the Maosu, Henshin Daki, and Horchin deserts and the surrounding areas of Kubuki Desert which have been transformed into an oasis. The grass grids and green barriers in the construction have helped prevent desertification by reducing the amount of sand that can blow into nearby areas. Grass grids are installed around the edges of the construction area to provide a barrier that reduces sand movement while green barriers involve planting vegetation around the construction area to help anchor the soil and prevent erosion. China's forest coverage has reached 23.04% up to 0.68% points from 2012 and 64 million hectares of trees have been planted in China over the past decade. Earlier data showed the area of desertified land in the country has, has shrunk by an annual average of 2,42,400 hectares reversing the trend from the late 1990s when desertified land expanded by 1.04 million hectares annually. Desertification remains one of the most pressing issues facing humankind with more than 2 billion people from 167 countries and regions still under desertification threat. Thanks to the years of sand control efforts, China has been quite prominent globally with the Kubiki Desert being an excellent example. The Kubiki Desert is China's seventh largest desert situated in Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region. Years of greening efforts made more than 646,000 hectares of desert lush green with restored biodiversity and noticeably improved ecology, lifting more than 100,000 people out of poverty. The construction of photovoltaic power stations along the Tyrium Desert Highway in the Takuma Khan Desert, located in the southern parts of China's Xinjiang Ugi Autonomous Region, marks a significant shift towards clean energy and reduction of carbon emissions. The Tyrium Desert Highway is a 532-kilometer long road that traverses through the Takuma Khan Desert, known as the world's second largest shifting sand desert, and China's largest desert in previous years. Diesel engines were used for pumping irrigation water to irrigate the shelter belts along the highway which were planted with 20 million trees in 2005. By the Trium oil field to protect the desert from sand intrusion, however, in a move to reduce carbon emissions this year, 86 photovoltaic power stations are being constructed along the highway using purely solar power instead of diesel generators. These clean energy power stations will pump underground water to irrigate the trees and achieve zero carbon dioxide emissions. The construction of the photovoltaic power station is a result of early efforts that began in 2010 when 12 solar power stations were built along with the desert highway to explore the use of clean energy as an alternative to diesel energy. For pumping irrigation water, the success of these early efforts led to the renovation of 86 well stations, replacing diesel generators with photovoltaic power generators. For pumping irrigation water, the photovoltaic power stations are designed and built differently at each wall station depending on the specific groundwater levels of the area. The photovoltaic panels, which have a lifespan of 25 years, are designed to withstand the sandstone of the desert and require regular cleaning. The power stations also have storage cabinets for energy, which can provide power for up to 7 hours during cloudy weather. I hope you understood and enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe our channel for more such information and videos.